Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Wednesday, May 15th, 1 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Lecon fast approaches. Need I say more? Lecon 2019, uncovering highly guarded information that has been suppressed for thousands of years. No longer is this just for the chosen or those that call themselves the elite, because you are now the chosen and you are now the elite. Lecon 2019 will be held May 18th and 19th at the Marriott Tech Center. It will be first class every step of the way. Let me give you a quick rundown on the guest speakers. David Mariello, a.k.a. Diamond, the founder of Oppenheimer Ranch Project. David Dubai, Adept 2030. Adrian D'Amico, Suspect Sky. John D'Souza, retired FBI agent, the real X-Man. Laird Scranton, comparative cosmology, researcher in Velikovsky, the electric universe, connecting the dots. Robert Felix, magnetic reversals and evolutionary leaps. Greg Allison, NASA insider, rocket builder, Guinness World records holder, Christian Westbrook, Ice Age Farmer, Hemp Lucid, Experience Life Again, Gorgeous Awesome, Healing Power of Crystals, we're going to have world class vendors from around the globe on site, artists, craftsmen, astrologers, engineers, and more. This event breaks the boundaries of normal and ignorance. Forget the fluff, you want the truth. You can handle the truth, and you will. LeCon 2019. Get your tickets today. We've got a handful of VIP tickets left. If you can't make it to the event, you can watch the live stream. From the convenience of your own home. Watch it on the big screen. Watch it on your phone. Live stream it. Kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. Be excellent to each other and be the change you want to see. Indeed, be the change you want to see. Lee Cod 2019 fast approaching. Be there. And that's boom. The time has come to unveil the lies. We will get back to that at the end of the show. <laughs> Snow measured plowed in mid-May. Snowfall, mid-May. Franconia Township. And now this is up in uh, New Hampshire. Take a look. Even though it was just for a couple of hours, Old Man Winter returned Tuesday, which was their lose day, bringing measurable, even plowable amounts of snow to several spots in the state, including the White Mountains. They measured two inches of new snow up top, but first thing in the morning, the snow expanded all the way to the base, recorded Gregory Keeler, the director of marketing and sales at Cannon Mountain. There it is. Heavy snow. Well, two inches of heavy. That was a heavy two inches. Hey, where's my sign? Let's go get it. Yeah. There we are. We're back. Seriously, May doesn't mean the snow stops falling. It doesn't. In Vermont, apparently. Or New Hampshire. Just because it's May doesn't mean the snow is done for the spring, at least in Vermont. A weather blog told Vermonteers to expect close to 10 inches of snow at the top of the Green Mountains, which are not mountains. Those are bumps up in the Northeast. Some call them hills. Some call them mountains. We'll call them Thursday because we're busy right now. Oh, watch how that works. Yeah. Boom. Winter makes a comeback in the Northeast, bringing snow and record-breaking cold. And we have video, which is not Schmidio. It's actual video, and it's dab-worthy. We're going to turn the sound on. We're dab it up. Do it now. Would you listen? Would you just listen to it? Dap delicious. A winter-like pattern moved over the northeast United States early this week, bringing hail, shredder hail, and winter conditions. Rain and even snow in several northern locales. Many living in the northeast experienced lower than average temperatures on Monday, which was not their fun day. That was their lose day. And this is our, we're back on day. 
Low temperature of 42 degrees Fahrenheit was recorded in New York City Central Park, according to the National Weather Service. The temperature fell three degrees shy of the all-time low, May 13th, set back in 1895 during the centennial minimum. But the all-time low high of 49 Fahrenheit for May 13th, set back in 1914, was shattered. And it wasn't even shattered day. It was shattered on Monday when the mercury in Central Park climbed to 48 degrees. That's New York City where you get slashed and hacked. Or, or however they do it over there. Holy sh... Oh my God. Let's get this done. By the time the all-time low high temperature 49 of 13th was set back in 1914, we were all probably not born. Probably not. And if I click that properly, whew, yeah, that's what happened there. We're going to reopen this tab and we're going to show you exactly what happened back in the day. So we're breaking records back to 1914 here, solar minimum of cycle 14, and then the 1895 records come right here in cycle 13, all which are contained in the centennial minimum, which as of 2010, you've been contained in the modern any minimum. So, from this point forward, we're going to be repeating the same sh back in cycle 14 for cycle 25, which means heavy snow, record snow, through May. Hey, hey. More like winter. Updated forecast calls for up to 10 inches of Sierra snow in May, and that's not it. This 10 inches is followed by 18 inches, which is followed by 24 inches, and we're going to get to it. It's inches. Road crews are working on Tioga Road, about one mile west of White Wolf, in eight feet of snow, blowing it like holy ho-ho as it continues to pile up. Now, this snow is continuing to pile up in this region. 10, 20 inches at a time. Even though it's summer, it's a bummer. So they're working hard. They're taking names all 25 seconds worth. And we're going to run it through. So we might even just do it again while you all do a dab. Do it now. As we are a rare mid-May winter storm. Wait a minute. Rare mid-May winter storm. We've been predicting this for a year and a half this spring. And we're predicting it next spring. We're predicting it all summer. Is blowing up in Northern California from Alaska. And is even set to drop more than a foot of snow on some parts of the Sierra by the end of the week. Oh my God. It's like global warming much? Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. I have some news for you. Lee Cons in three days, you prick. Stay down and lay down. By Thursday, Sacramento and most of Northern California will see moderate rain, breezy winds, and a sharp drop in their pants, meaning temperatures, potentially sharp enough to set daily records in some parts of the valley and the foothills. This is after the Kardashians got snow this winter. Yeah, the Kardashians. Mm-hmm. Updated forecasts by the National Weather Service are providing some more clarity on the precipitation outlook as the wet, cold, winter-like storm creeps closer. Here's what to expect later this week. Mountain snow is expected to begin late Wednesday through Thursday as we descend on Lecon through the Sierras. Most of the northern and central Sierras will see between 5 and 10 inches of snow by Friday morning. As much as 20 inches possible locally at high ele higher elevations. We're talking above 10, 5, 11. Snow will fall above 6,000 feet in all regions according to the National Weather Service, which is a normal figure for winter and are likely on Highway 50, Interstate 80, where snow could result in significant reduction of visibility near the summit. Chain controls are possible. <laughs> you think? The National Weather Service has issued a winter storm watch at the end of May, right before summer in places for the start of Thursday at 6 a.m. to Friday. In a tweet Tuesday morning, National Weather Service Sacramento advised it's going to feel more like winter by the middle or end of the week. Not only that, we have space weather coming that could potentially perturb the, not only the live stream, 
but the lame stream, and that's not the mainstream. Volcano experts weigh in on effects of possible Mount Rainier eruption. Yeah, sixty. There be six hundred thousand people totally fluxed. What would happen to the state's biggest metropolitan area should the third highest risk volcano in ever ever blow? Well, large lahars will flow down this region here and kill tens of thousands of people instantly. The U.S. volcano experts, based primarily out of the Pacific Northwest, took to Reddit Tuesday answering questions regarding the active volcanoes across the country. The biggest misconception about volcanoes I've seen in an, is an overestimation of the hazards, such as assumptions that Rainier eruption will cause widespread destruction in Seattle. Well, that's just not true, unless it's a VEI 4 or 5, in which case that is true said Washington State Emergency Management Division Volcano Program Coordinator Brian Terbush said so you need to look at the hazard maps and you just right click and open link I just learned you something and you'll get a whole map of hazards right before your very face now we're dealing with connectivity issues so we may take a minute because of its elevation Hydrothermal alteration, ice cap, glacier melt, and death is inevitable, but it's only in the regions of the washout of the Lahar. The Puyallup River, heads up. The Nisqually, and any river flowing from Mount Rainier, including the Carbon, and this one, which is no name. The White, coming out of Sunrise, and if you're in the Cowlitz River, you're dead. The Nisqually River is the most dangerous and the upper Pulliam. And when we're talking immediate Lahar death in those regions. But on major eruptions, it's only people that are living in the low-lying areas that are dead. And we're including the yellow and the red regions. If you're in the yellow and red, enough said. We warned you. Those are bad places to be when Rainier goes puff, puff, pass. 2019 Mississippi River flood, the longest lasting since the Great Flood of 1927. We're breaking river, we're breaking records, and they're going back way before global warming. Some people are going to start to take note, and they're going to be wondering what's happening. The longevity of this year's Mississippi River flooding rivals the Great Flood of 27 in some locations. Parts of the river, river have remained above flood stage for three months or longer. Not only that, this river isn't going to crest for another week or so, and with ongoing rain and other unseen or foreseen situations, they're totally fluxed. More than 260 river gauges are reporting levels above flood stage Tuesday. And by the time I get back on the air to do an update, it might be next week. And that will be a tweak. This is the last update I can do on Grand Solar Minimum forcing and weather anomalies, at least until Monday or Tuesday. I might throw a quick one up this weekend at LeCon, but do not count on it. There is much to do. Mississippi River flooding has been ongoing for three months or longer. You can see the double gauge, bulge, bulge, double pump. And these are standard predictions coming out on Twitter from the USGS. Here you can see flood status. These purples are going to move south and the, from St. Louis south to New Orleans and not looking good through June. Heads up. So if you live down in here, Lake Pontchartrain in these regions, look for a major onslaught of flooding to come in just weeks, which will be tweaks. We're talking record flooding from St. Louis south, ongoing maybe through July which is when our river season is going to be ongoing. Federal flood controls were erected as a result of the Flood Control Act in 1928. Now, because of these regulations and these levies, you're fluxed. Because once it gets above major level, they blow and they flood entire regions instantly. So, more than 260 river gauges are reported levels at or above flood stage on Tuesday. Of those, 23 gauges reported major flooding, 70 moderate. And there's the estimated precipitation January 1st through May 13th. And there's the reason why. Heads up, Memphis. You're in the bullseye. Holy sh... Can we even open this without paying? 
Oh my God, we can make it slightly bigger. That's about it. 40 plus inches of rain there in the blue zone. Also North Kakalaki, a little tippy touch. That's snow water equivalent and includes massive amounts of snow in there in the mountains which are notched mountains. 15 minutes, 20 seconds in. And we're looking good. Nothing's loaded, and we are really drawing the bandwidth here. But that has to do with the space weather, and we're going to get to that. Connectivity issues worldwide. We were at K uh, Geomagnetic Storm G3 earlier today, KP7. And look! Would you just look at the GFS models? Holy sh... Holy... Fired up. That's all I got to say. Do not try this at home. There is no nicotine in there. No addictive properties in this medicine. I'm just sampling the product I'll be handing out at LeetCon 2019, just coming up in three days. Let's take a look at the models. We're talking four feet in some regions of northern Wyoming. Through the end of May, heavy snow up in northern Colorado, all the way down through my region. We're going to be picking up at least three feet of snow in the upper elevations. But my eye is on the prize here in the high Sierra, Sierra Crest, all the way up through Oroville, where we're looking at one to two feet of snow through May 25th, when the major melt will begin. And that dam is full, damn it. Good times. Wet and cool weather pattern in the western states. A potent weather system will bring rain locally heavy with higher elevation snows to portions of California, southwestern Oregon, and the northern Rockies. As much as two feet of snow may blanket the California mountains above 6,000, which is a normal forecast if we were talking about February. But we're not. We're talking May. Hey, hey. Rain and snow will also impact much of the intermontane west. Look at the pink spot over there. They're getting pink. We're getting in the pink. Oh my God. We've just shut down. Full system failure. It exploded. What are you going to do? What can we do? We can wait. We're waiting. We will wait. We're going to push it one more time. We'll see what the Brave Browser does. 17 minutes, 53 seconds in. Al trapped in ice. We have nowhere to go unless this browser pops back up. It could be a voltage issue. We're dealing with it. Bear with us. Should pop up any second now. This is the longest glitch in magnetic reversal news history. Let me figure this out. Because I got the clout. Ho! Oh, so I'll turn the party out. Boom! It appears that something's happening. What's happening is anyone's guess, but the screen has now turned white and it is refreshing. It's a refreshing situation to finally get back where you once came. Yes, we want to restore that because I spent five hours loading those tabs. And I don't mean carcinogenic soda. Let's see what these people have to say. We're about to be talking about some volcanoes and some space weather. So stick with us. Stick with us, kids. We're going to go long stream here. Are we heading into a food shortage? Well, of course we are. Many people in our circles have been predicting this. We've been reporting on the cacophony of weather effects worldwide that affect crops. Not only that, Ice Age Farmer, who's going to be at LeeCon, Adapt 2030, who's flying all the way from the other side of the globe to be at LeeCon in just one day, and others. We have been diligently watching and reporting on what we predicted. And we are not cherry picking, we're reporting on the facts. You cannot cherry pick facts, folks. The facts are the facts. Mr. Armstrong deals in facts because he also deals in money. 
I find it really distasteful that you laid out events well in advance and then everyone copies you without ever giving you credit. Well, he's not the only one. Mr. Armstrong, David Dubine, David Moriello, Christian Westbrook, Robert Felix. I could go on. We've been showing you the same data, the same historical information, and we've corroborated it. Not only have we made the predictions correct, we've followed it up with the correct predictions. And when the forecasts come true, our faces turn blue. And you know what? That's life. According to Armstrong, they're trying to sell something so they have to pretend they do research to make money to get people to read. Well, some people are doing that. But you don't have to buy our channel. You just have to subscribe or hide in the shadows and watch every day, like most of you do. Did you know that two out of three Magnetic Reversal News and Oppenheimer Ranch channel watchers aren't subscribers? Yeah. I have no idea why that is. People are so scared of their own shadow. Last night's 5.1 earthquake off the coast of the North Island in New Zealand is a repeat of what happened during the last solar minimum. Maybe back in 2020. Who knows? Seismic update. Major quakes today being kicked off directly by the sun. 7.5 at Coco Po in Papua New Guinea. Popping off at 12.53 UTC, exactly when we went into this geomagnetic storm. Right about here, boom. And let's take a look at when that is here on solar wind. Because I want you to learn something. At 12.58 UTC, when that earthquake occurred, the phi angle was ripped apart here and shifted. This moment is the moment of the earthquake. And we say always be ready when it's at 180. Sun to earth. And right in that flexure zone there, right at the rip zone. It was boom time. 7.7. .7. Downgraded to 7.5 by the USGS. Coupled by Yellowstone Quakes. 3.1 up in Montana, frack quakes, mid-ocean ridge quakes as the earth swells, Easter Island 5.0, there's that 5.2, and New Zealand already downgraded according to New Zealand to 5.1, 5.4 in Japan, 5.7 in Russia, Adak, Alaska, volcano at 4.5, going boom, boom, 4.3 in Greece. Volcanic study reveals truth about the environment. Yeah. Most are most volcanoes are considered dormant and haven't erupted for more than 10,000 years. That means that if it's erupted 10,000 years or sooner, it's active. The only problem is some people don't consider that the threshold. So what the information you get is that that's a dormant volcano and it erupted 3,000 years ago, and that's not true. An active volcano has erupted in the last 10,000 years, period. Now, large volcanic eruptions in Indonesia put sulfur gases into the, uh, and ash into the atmosphere and all the way up into the stratosphere if they break that 50,000, 60,000 foot mark. And that can change climate. When we see a large eruption, people tend to forget that it can have global consequences. It can even change agricultural yields. What? Cosmic rays cause volcanoes to erupt. We're in the cosmic ray maximum and it can cause agricultural yields to diminish. Like how much corn is being produced in the Midwest? Wait a minute. This is in public radio? Walmanam volcano erupts just days ago to 50,000 feet. 
the mainstream is reporting that volcanoes in Indonesia that are up to 50,000 feet can affect the bottom line of crop production. And that's tonight's first boom. If you're picking up what we're putting down, we just put it all down for you. Explosive activity continues at Manam, a volcano that is typical of VEI-4 in historic past, including erupting at the same time that Krakatoa eliminated thousands of lives in this region. Manam was also exploding. As the Bible was coding, now we have Darwin warning that volcanic ash plume rise to an estimated 50,000 feet altitude or flight level 500 is moving 50 knots in the east direction. That's 10 miles high. Right at the stratospheric boundary. Where those aerosols change the weather patterns for years. And it's just beginning. Wait until we get the 85,000 and the 105,000 footers. Fuego blowing to 15,000 feet. Sabancaya to 27,000. Manam to 50,000. Ducono to 7,000. Stromboli showing up on thermal imaging. And Lecon about to start while we just are ending a G3 geomagnetic storm because of that phi angle shift. And we're waiting for more. We're waiting for a plasma, a plasma filament that erupted to come and get us. And it's plotted here on Iswa. Boom! And it's going to hit Friday afternoon, Friday night as LeCon begins. Is this going to be a blackout in Denver? Is it a worldwide blackout? I doubt it. We might have, have some minor perturbations to satellite. We're going to be watching telemetry as this approaches. Because according to ISWA, we're going to get a little bit of a boom boom here on the 17th. I mean PDF style. Breaking news. The 17th. There could be a boom boom, according to NASA. Well, actually, yeah, that's NASA. Holy shit. Graham warns 5G security threat from China. It looks like he hasn't slept in days. Either that or he drinks lots of whiskey. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Lindsey Graham, Republican, South Kakalaki, clearly needs an eye job. On Tuesday, he pressed Trump administration to work with Congress on combating security threats from 5G wireless technology. Huh, is this a front? What is going on here? Stopping businesses with countries using Chinese technologies. Somehow China has hacked 5G. And we're about to get all Pokemon up in this shit. Thank you, Graham. Lindsay for drinking whiskey and looking like shit. Governor Reynolds signs law enabling industrial hemp production in Iowa. Well, holy macaroni! Grow that hemp 50 feet high in Des Moines. Governor Kim Reynolds has signed a bill in a law that allows Iowa farmers to legally grow industrial hemp to 50 feet high. The Iowa Hemp Act passed the legislature with overwhelming support last month, which is a boom to hemp and other products and Bill Reynolds signed the Monday allows licensed growers to cultivate the crop up up to 40 acres 50 feet high <laughs> to poke you in the eye since 2018 farm bill eased federal restrictions on hemp now this is a joke now let me tell you why I'm going to give you the brass tacks the facts for all you people out there that are thinking that you're going to save the world and grow hemp the license costs a minimum of $500 just to get the license. That's to grow one can plant. One or a million, it's the same price. $500. Now, let's say you're a small farm like us and we want to grow hemp. So I buy the license. And then I say I want to grow hemp on this one acre. The federal government is allowed to come 
as, as often as they want to your property because you have to provide them aerial photographs, the exact coordinates, pictures, and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and as it's vegetating, they're going to come and sample your crop. And if it has any THC in it, you're going to jail or you have to burn it all and this, that, and the third. And you're not allowed to grow marijuana in your property unless you have a green card. And then the feds are allowed to come on your property anytime they want. Who is going to grow hemp? I ask you. Who the p wants that? Regulations are regurgitations of the slavery model to make you think that you're free. Here you can grow this. It just you have to call it costs you this much, and then you have to get this permit, and then we are allowed to come on your property at uh, any time of night, and you'll go to jail. Well, thank you, Governor Reynolds. Sounds like a Christmas present I never wanted. <laughs> <clears throat> Holy sh Where are we at? San Francisco bans facial recognition technology. Well, thank God. Thank you, 9-11. The most amazing false flag in history that I was alive for. Enacting the Patriot Act and every other type of spying technology which has completely raped us of any of our freedoms that we ever had. And now, San Francisco, the gayest place on earth, stepping up to the plate, taking names. San Francisco, long at the heart of technology revolution, took a stand against potential abuse on Tuesday by banning the use of facial recognition software by the police and other agencies. Yes! We love you, San Fran, even if you're a little gay. I'm a little gay sometimes. I mean, look at my fucking hair already. Holy macaroni. Have you heard? Recon, 2019, by covering your information that has been suppressed for thousands of years. No longer is this just for the chosen or those that call themselves the elite, because you are now the chosen, and you are now the elite. Lecon 2019 will be held May 18th and 19th at the Marriott Tech Center. It will be first class every step of the way. Let me give you a quick rundown on the guest speakers. David Mariello, a.k.a. Diamond, the founder of Oppenheimer Ranch Project. David Dubai, Adept 2030. Adrian D'Amico, Suspect Sky. John D'Souza, retired FBI agent, the real X-Man, Laird Scranton, Comparative, Cosmology, Researcher in Velikovsky, The Electric Universe, Connecting the Dots, Robert Felix, Magnetic Reversals and Evolutionary Leaps, Greg Allison, NASA Insider, Rocket Builder, Guinness World Records Holder, Christian Westbrook, Ice Age Farmer, Hemp Lucid, Experience Life Again, Gorgeous Awesome, Healing Power of Crystals, we're going to have world-class vendors from around the globe, on-site, artists, craft astrologers, engineers, and more. This event breaks the boundaries of normal and ignorance. Forget the fluff. You want the truth. You can handle the truth, and you will. LeCon 2019. Get your tickets today. We've got a handful of VIP tickets left. If you can't make it to the event, you can watch the live stream from the convenience of your own home. Watch it on the big screen. Watch it on your phone. Live stream it. Kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. Be excellent to each other, and be the change you want to see. You want to see.
Damn, that shit was skippy. Oh, go get it. I just got some. Have you heard about the con? I might even break this blue. This thing kicks some shit. Oh, Greg's gonna be there. We're gonna talk about worms. I think he's staying early and he's staying late. We might go to dinner Sunday night. Are you there? Are you buying crystals? Holy shit. I might even have some of my lotion. Maybe some shunk guy. You can handle the truth. There's always live stream. So if you didn't know about the live stream, go get it. And we're going to just close up tonight with breaking news. I like that PDF. <laughs> shrinking moon may be triggering moonquake, study says. Moon is shrinking, wrinkling, and shaking, a new study says. A new look at seismic data is helping scientists fill in the blanks about how the moon is changing and gets older. And bolder. They think they're still occurring. <coughs> Something is stirring. Seismometers left on the moon by Apollo missions recorded 28 moon quakes between 1969 and 77. At least eight are linked to thrust faults. They're thrust up and faulting and formed as the moon shrinks. And if it is made of cheese, then it probably stinks. If it's Gruyere. I almost picked my nose. A giant hole in the Martian atmosphere is venting all its water into space. And it's a disgrace because there's barely any water on Mars. Before this slow process dries out the planet, Mars may have been covered by vast oceans. This illustration shows an illustration. There's a hole in the Martian atmosphere that opens once every two years. Dear Li uh, Liza, dear Liza, there's a hole in the Mars can you feel it? A hole. Isn't that, is that a song? Hey, two days, 17 hours, five minutes, and 12 seconds until we click on that live stream and you get to see a bunch of drunken VIPs and other idiots, including all of our speakers, who some of them may be tweakers, but we'll all be assembled in Denver for one cause, and that is to be the change that you want to see. And also to share ideas with like-minded people who are not sheeple. If you cannot make it to LeCon in Denver and you're not one of the elite 287 people who bought tickets, then you can buy the live stream and stay home in your underwear and smoke rip bongs and watch all the shows. And after the live stream's over, I'm going to figure out how to make it video on demand so you can watch it forever. And anyone who wants to watch the programs can buy a single talk, the entire conference. It's up to you. But if you buy the live stream, you will have access to every single one of the talks, plus behind the scenes action and all the videos that come with the live stream, which will go live in two days, 17 hours and three minutes. And we may go live in one day, 17 hours and three minutes at the venue as a teaser to implore you to buy the live stream so you don't miss out. And that's breaking news. Hope you got something out of the video. Time is ticking to buy the live stream. Less than four days. 
Keep calm. It's boom time. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our Patreons for keeping us going. Thanks for all the VIPs that are coming out to LeakCon and making LeakCon happen. Without you, we would have no LeakCon. I'm going to kiss your ass all weekend, and I'm even going to dress nice, and I cut my hair. Huh? Do you see that? Isn't that nice? It's fancy. We love you. Be safe. See you at LeakCon.